know her as the Grammy-winning pop princess of the late 80s and early 90s, whose songs like Cold Hearted, blasted from practically every radio in America. Her dance moves straight up iconic, her choreography award-winning. Paula Abdul is an American dream story. She starts off as a Laker girl and then inside of a year becomes the head choreographer and Janet Jackson hired her to be her choreographer. And from there, someone said, you know what? If she can sing too, she can be a superstar. More than two decades into her storied career, another big break, being a judge on the star maker hit TV show, American Idol. This is American Idol. I'm proud of being the wizard behind the curtain that made families gather around. Shortly after Idol came So You Think You Can Dance. Gabby, yeah, you know, that was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> but nearly a decade after leaving the judges' table, Abdul says behind the scenes she felt there was some behavior that was inappropriate and even criminal. Now suing executive producer Nigel Lithgow who she says subjected her to not just verbal harassment and bullying, but also sexual abuse. Since then, ABC News has learned two more women have filed lawsuits against the industry juggernaut, alleging that Lithgow made unwanted sexual advances on them while they were contestants on the 2003 show All American Girl, which aired on ABC. Network representatives had not responded to our request for comment. Lithgow, a pioneer of reality TV. A classically trained dancer and choreographer. He went on to develop and produce Britain's top rated pop idol. There you go, that's the end of Pop Idol 2002. Nigel, for the last 20 years, has really made his mark as a talent based reality TV producer. He's brought a number of television shows to American households and international households, developing and helping to develop new superstar talent. In 2002, Lithgow moved to the U.S. to produce American Idol, which became the number one television show in the country, drawing up to 38 million viewers in one episode. You are through to the next round. You're coming All back. Right. <laughs> the program became a cultural phenomenon that introduced America to the powerful voices of Kelly Clarkson. Country superstar Carrie Underwood, Fantasia Barino, and Academy Award winner Jennifer Hudson. We're going live. Nightline went backstage with Paula Abdul in 2009 as she returned to judge her eighth season of Idol, her contract set to expire that same year. If this is my last hurrah on Idol, I must say the proudest thing for me is that I'm having the best time of my life. Paula, you're an inspiration. Thank you. I love the show. I do. I love what I do. But behind the curtain, Abdul says she was the target of harassment coming from Lithgow. In one incident during one of American Idol's early seasons, the complaint states that during an elevator ride, Lithgow shoved her against the wall, then grabbed her genitals and breasts and began shoving his tongue down her throat. I think she was fearful that if she spoke out against someone who is a very powerful reality TV show producer, and that's where she was making her life's work, that that would limit the jobs and opportunities that she has. So she stayed silent. Her legal team says in part that Paula has lived with the trauma of these events for a long time. And like many victims, suffered feelings of guilt and trepidation over being shunned from her industry. Paula, she's hanging out with Kathy Hilton. She's doing okay right now. So I don't think that this, you know, is a money grab. I think she probably was just fed up and didn't want to be silent anymore. Abdul left Idol in 2009 after being denied a raise. And a few years later joined So You Think You Can Dance as a judge, a show Lithgow also created and he judged alongside her. You've mastered every language there is in dance. According to her lawsuit, Abdul says it was around that time that Lithgow invited her to dinner at his home forced himself on top of her and attempted to kiss her while proclaiming that the two would make an excellent power couple. In the complaint, she also states that at one point Lithgow called her and taunted her that they should celebrate because it had been seven years and the statute of limitations had run. 
In a statement to the Associated Press, Lithgow says, while Paula's history of erratic behavior is well known, I can't pretend to understand exactly why she would file a lawsuit that she must know is untrue, but I can promise that I will fight this appalling smear with everything I have. None of the production companies implicated in the suit have responded to Nightline's request for comment. Now sources tell ABC News Lithgow is facing additional accusations. A lawsuit filed earlier this week by two contestants of the 2003 ABC show All American Girl alleges that Lithgow engaged in sexual harassment, battery and assault. The contestants claim that Lithgow, one of the show's executive producers, made sexual advances toward both of them, including pinning one of the women against a grand piano in the house, pushed himself against her body and forced his mouth and tongue onto her. According to the filing, the contestants did not consent to the contact on any occasion. These lawsuits are the latest in a series of high-profile cases in California that are part of the Sexual Abuse and Cover-Up Accountability Act. The Sexual Abuse and Cover-Up Accountability Act gave adults, survivors of sexual abuse, this look-back window to say, even though the statute of limitations might have expired for those allegations that you suffered, we will allow you to reopen and accuse your uh, abusers of sexual assault during this period. As the law neared its expiration date, several filings involving celebrities came to light, including a claim against Jackson 5 member Jermaine Jackson and Motley Crue's Tommy Lee. Neither have commented publicly on the allegations. So what do you think it is that pushes some people to go from that place of fear to finally make that decision to come forward? Seeing high profile people being held accountable for their actions, the knowledge that sexual assault can touch the most vulnerable among us and also the most powerful among us is something that I believe allows a lot of survivors to know that they can come forward and actually be believed and that they are not alone. But it's not just California. Other states are opening windows for sexual assault filings. In New York, the Adult Survivors Act paved the way for filings against Sean Diddy Combs, who's denied any wrongdoing and settled one of the lawsuits against him, and Neil Portnow, former head of the Grammy Awards, who also denies the allegations. Current laws that offer look-back windows are absolutely a good step. They signal an advancing understanding of the survivor journey and also what may prevent survivors from coming forward in the immediate aftermath of an attack. Ultimately, I think these are good things, but I think we can go further. Our thanks to Diane. Anyone affected by sexual assault can find support from the National Sexual Assault Hotline at 1-800-656-HOPE or 4673. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.